Hello. Oh gosh. It's, it's messy today. The hair is out of control. Sorry. It's a little rainy and I'm frizzy, but, um, so we're back. It is week 10 video for becoming a salty tutor. And, um, this week was slightly different than the other weeks. So we had, um, an input session on Tuesday morning. It was an hour and a half, the typical, uh, looking at language awareness in future forms. And then we had the second half of the input session was actually um, tutorial meetings for tutorial two. I'll get into it. Then we also had um, observations of experienced teachers and some interviewing of the students instead of teaching. Um, because they're, oh, well, I should say, instead of uh, assessed lessons, um, and then there was assisted lesson planning on Thursday. So let's get into what we saw for language awareness. Language awareness about future forms. Just going to take a look at my notes here because it's been a long week. Um, so we looked at the differentiation uh, between different forms used for the future, and we were focusing on meaning. Uh, and or form with relation to teaching practice. Um, pretty much the session was like group discussion, workshop tasks, interactive type of lecture. Um, so a lot of, quite dynamic per usual. Um, the session started with a, question, a few questions about future tenses. And uh, they had to go into breakout rooms, justify their answers. Uh, questions like, is there a future tense in English? Sorry, I'm trying to keep, keep my trying to keep my hair in order for you. It's it's messy. It's just going to be that kind of day. Um, what are the three most common ways of expressing future in English? Uh, which two structures can be used to for making predictions, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And then um, the came back into the whole group and we had discussion about why these things might be challenging for students, specifically regarding form and meaning. Um, and then we had a brief discussion uh, before they were divided into pairs again, going to breakout rooms to match sentences um, and situations via a uh, word world game. Once they came back, uh, again, just kind of back and forth discussions about um, the CEFR expectations in terms of structures and kind of uh, looking at um, re how we represent future and, and what the expectations are amongst the, the, the proficiency levels. Uh, let's see, what else did we do? There was some error, oh, error correction and different techniques that teachers could use for like it practically in their classroom. Um, so looking at a, lots of different techniques for that. And finally, there was a practical task for the teachers to compare and contrast two forms. And then to finish the session, the tutor had a um, fill in the blank sentences regarding things that we had discussed throughout the session. So it was quite good, quite useful. Um, and then we had the um, tutorial meetings, the, the second tutorial number two. Um, so if you don't know, now you do, um, when you take the CELTA, there is some record keeping. So what happens is you get this booklet, uh, whether it's physical or, or digital. I think everything's digital. I don't even know. To be honest, I think everything's digital now, but I would have to check. Anyways, my hair is going to fall off my head at this point. Um, so it's called the uh, the CELTA 5. It's the candidate record booklet. Um, and in the CELTA 5, there's a, some record keeping that you need to do. When, you, when the candidates are observing experienced teachers, because they have to do so many hours of lesson observation, when they teach, um, they need to record their lessons in there. Um, there's also some checkpoints. We can call them checkpoints. Um, so this is the second checkpoint. Um, so the first one, they receive some feedback. Uh, sometimes there's a, a, a tutorial session. Sometimes there's not. It's not a requirement. Um, so it depends on, on the center. Um, and they just give you, the tutors give you their initial um, uh, reactions, kind of, and, and initial feedback about your teaching practice and how you're doing within the course. And this is the second one. Uh, and this one, there is a tutorial that you sit down and you have not an interview, but it's like a conversation, 
conversation that, because I watch both tutors deal with uh, a few different candidates. And so um, it was quite similar, uh, though they have different styles and the way that they it's similar, you have a conversation with your tutor. Prior to doing that, let me show you to make it a little bit easier um, to understand. So prior to doing that, there is this, which is the um, stage two progress report. So you can see that it's broken down into units. You and your tutor both have um, things to fill out. Oops, sorry, I'm sharing the screen. And so you go through all of these items and you mark them as, there's a, a code here. So um, X if it's not applicable, N if it's not the standard, S if it's the standard, and S plus if you think that you're doing that above standard. And so you can just go through all of these different things uh, and they are regarding planning and resources for the teaching context, uh, learners and the learning context. Uh, unit two is language analysis and awareness. Unit three is language skills. Uh, unit five is developing teaching skills and professionalism. This is mainly uh, about like pra your teaching practice, uh, giving the classes. And then let me flip this so you can see this page. Um, there's written assignments, so they have done at least two written assignments um, and they've gotten f at least the initial feedback for one of them. Uh, oh no, I apologize. One written assignment has been done, the language analysis one, the first one, assignment number one. Um, so they wrote down their um, th things that they would want to discuss, any issues that they had with the written assignments and any other considerations that they wanted to make. Um, they put examples here like problems with attendance, access to resources, coping with workloads, need for support. So it's kind of a way for you to just kind of touch the base with your tutor and see what's going on. Overall progress. Um, so you're assessing yourself uh, here. So if you think you're doing an above standard for this stage to standard or not to standard and indicate the areas in which you need to work on. So it's a little bit of a reflection on things that you still um, are either struggling with or have identified as, as uh, areas for improvement. And then the tutors go through and they give you their assessment as well, giving you um, some information about your performance in terms of above standard to standard or not to standard and um, some action points that they consider there. And then both people sign and date it. So as I was observing these interviews going on, um, we had half of the candidates had it this week. Uh, the other half will have it next week, week 11. Um, it was interesting. It was interesting to see. Um, and I think that one of the things that I noticed was that though you think, if you're a candidate, though you think you're trying really hard, um, there if you're trying really hard, good, you should be. I mean, that's that's the objective of taking a course and trying to learn is that you try hard uh, and, and put all the effort into it. But um, in terms of not to standard, standard and above standard, um, what are the expectations of the course at this point? Um, and so, so yeah, people need to be more reflective of this is not, it, this is not an assessment of your effort. This is an assessment of your performance in accordance with the expectations of the course, um, because there was a little bit of a confusion and some bit of a discrepancy between what the candidates thought they were doing in terms of their effort and how much they were they were producing compared to what the tutors were thinking in terms of is this appropriate or not for this meeting expectations for this point in the course. Um, yes, so um, the, the the ones that I watched, the two that I watched this week, the tutor went through all of the um, the points and then had a, a general discussion afterwards and gave some tips and advice uh, for um, action points for the second part of the course. It was interesting though, um, if you're a candidate and your tutor tells you that these things need to be done prior to the meeting, make sure that you get them done. Um, it doesn't look good uh, 
for you as a candidate that you show up to a meeting unprepared, especially if you're trying to give yourself a above standard in lesson preparation and materials preparation. This is part of the course. This is not a lesson plan, but this is materials that you need for the course. So don't give yourself an above standard if you're not coming to, to this meeting prepared. Um, and also, uh, what was the other, there's another point that I had noticed. I guess, oh yeah, I guess that's it for, for, for that. Um, and then the second, um, the second part of this week for observation of experienced teachers. So the candidates were able to see, um, because we had actually, we switched now. So the group that was teaching the elementary group is now teaching the intermediate plus group. And the people who are teaching intermediate plus are now teaching the elementary. So therefore the main course tutor and the other uh, course tutor were um, teaching. Uh, and so the candidates were observing part of their uh, observation of experienced teachers. Um, and they also had a chance to interview the candidates. So after they saw, um, it was a 90 minute lesson. Then after they saw that there was uh, 30 minutes of interaction directly with the, the new students, the new group that they were going to be teaching. Um, this is extremely important because it was, well, it's a way of them getting to know the people that they're going to be teaching, but also um, assignment number two is for them to start to consider some factors um, and do a little bit of analysis of uh, learners. So uh, they could use their own learners or they could use the learners from this group. Um, and so asking those questions and um, getting a concrete evidence of performance for their assignment two was important there. Um, and then following that, I was there uh, and ran the assisted lesson planning session, um, which is like 45 minutes to an hour or so, depending. And um, so what they got to do was to go off and uh, look at the new materials that they were going to be using. And at this point in the course, um, because they were receiving assistance uh, I mean, they have been receiving assistance throughout the course, but at this point in the course, uh, they're starting, they're going to be teaching their unassessed lessons, and then they're going to be um, starting with TP5. So it's the second half, the official second half of the course. Um, so the support and the scaffolding that they had for lesson planning previously is, is slowly starting to be taken away. For example, um, they're given the pages and the focus um, and the, materi the materials for their lessons and we're suggesting stages um, of their lessons. Uh, but beyond that, that's it. There, there's nothing else that the, the candidates are receiving in terms of um, things that are, are, are done for them. So they were receiving in the beginning kind of like not step-by-step -step procedures, but they were receiving procedures and suggestions and, and, and a lots of structure. And so that is starting to, to fall away and, and they're expected to, to be able to, um, to plan the lessons independently and to, to be able to put the whole lesson plan together and, and understand the, the level of detail needed and the level of or I should say the amount of consideration to be taken while they're staging and developing the lesson plan and delivering the lesson, obviously. Um, so yeah, so that was it for week 10. It was a little bit different, uh, interesting, obviously, a uh, little bit different, but still good. Um, yes, I would say the only thing from this week to think about is um, candidates need to make sure that they keep up with their paperwork. Uh, they also need to make sure that they're meeting deadlines. If in the, your table, if the, the institution gives you the table and the, the dates when assignments are due and you arrive to your second tutorial without turning in your assignment, which was due two days ago, and um, your, your paperwork isn't filled out, uh, it's not a good indication that you're handling the workload well, which you know, you might need to have some assistance or you might need to have some support in being able to meet the deadlines. But um, 
Yeah. So uh, make sure that as you're going through these these this course, if you're taking this Elta or if you're a tutor, make sure that people are are filling out their paperwork and just kind of keeping up with everything because there's a lot going on. But you making sure you're checking all the boxes, um, uh, not just attending the input sessions and teaching. There's paperwork to do and documents and portfolios to build as well. Uh, I think that's it for week 10. Uh, more administrative this week uh, and next week uh, will probably be slightly similar uh, because there will be the other half. So the, the candidates, the other half of the candidates that didn't receive their tutorial two will receive their tutorial two. Um, and that's it. Yes. So uh, I will see everybody later. And I'll be back with uh, week 11. So that was week 10 of self training. <laughs> <laughs>